Welcome. Amen. Hold that thought, my friends. Got to queue up a couple of things. There it is. Let's get that queue up. Stop. Friends, coast to coast and worldwide. You're live on the air with Pastor Rick. Amen. All right. There it is. Channel 3, Spreaker. You are in the house. The church is on. And let's uh, do a quick sound check here. All right. There it is. Mm -hmm. Three Spreaker. All right. You are in the house. There it is. New headset. I'm excited about that. Got the new Bible coming in this morning. Uh, new King James. That's going to be awesome. And uh, let's see. Let's double check a couple of things here. Make sure I set the clock right. There it is. All right. Uh, all right. Good to see you. Let's get going, friends. Worldwide Live Ministry Podcast Network. Pastor Rick here. Good to see you. Bright and early for your Monday morning. Thought I'd get on here uh, since I kind of overslept last night. Uh, I was going to get in there about 10 or 11. That didn't happen. Uh, so I, I just reset uh, as I was already awake studying uh, for tonight's podcast. Uh, the later one, about 10 o'clock, I'll probably jump back on here and restream just to get, uh, you know, kind of a double Monday uh, on restream TV. So, and then tomorrow we'll be back on um, the uh, <laughs> Melon TV. So, I uh, thought, like I said, just uh, jump back on here and. Uh, you know, can't get the can't give the devil any time to to rest, friends. We got to keep him going. You know, agitated, uh, stepping on his tail, all that good stuff. So that's what I'm doing, uh, friends. Want to keep that momentum going. Uh, I appreciate the followers and subscribers. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for that support. Listen, I got a lot to cover. We are going to go in a whole lot, my friends. Uh, amen. Trying to figure out why I've got a, a low end here. Not much on my volume level for uh, the channel here, so I'm not sure what's going on with that. But, you know, <laughs> I'll work with it and I'll deal with it anyway. As long as I can hear a little bit there uh, into the main channel here on 3, uh, we'll be okay. All right. So, like I said, we've got a lot to cover. We're going to look at... How the Holy Spirit works in our lives, and we're going to cover uh, Matthew, uh, I believe, chapter 14 and 15. That's going to be our our, our morning opening uh, scriptures, and a whole lot more, my friends. Got a lot for you today. Uh, again, I got a kind of a busy afternoon, so I wanted to get on here as early as possible uh, and then uh, probably later on tonight after 10 o'clock or so. But uh, I wanted to give you guys a, a Monday since I didn't give you a Sunday one. <laughs> and again, I kind of overslept on that one. I had a real hectic couple of days here. So uh, you all know how that goes, right? So I thought I'd jump on it and start our Monday in the Word of God, my friends. Make sure you got your Bibles with you, your fresh cup of coffee pens, papers, notebook, tablets, highlighters for your highlighters, and more, friends. We are going to dig into the Word of God this morning. Amen. Uh, get that fresh cup of coffee and the fresh Word of God. Uh, can't beat that, my friends. All right, let's uh, pray it in. And uh, as I'm looking at monitors here, uh, let's uh, let's see. What did I do? On? Well, I'm going to have to do a little bit of a uh clean up there i think um oh boy all right well we can do that real quick here um not that bad uh, it'll be uh pretty easy before we pray it in i want to make sure uh for some reason um <laughs> hang on here all right there it is uh i put an equal sign in there instead of a save sign on the uh, on the spot there, so I change it over on channel two. So there you go. Uh, you gotta love technology, friends. All right, so is that good? Are we good? <laughs> All right, and there it is. 
is. And we are going to go into the uh, salvation prayer here, too, as well. So, all right, there it is. Heavenly Father, thank you this morning as we wake up and uh, go about our day and plan our day. Uh, Father God, thank you for, uh, you know, the, the air, the fresh air that we're going to have today. And even the rain, even if it rains, it's all right. Uh, Father God, thank you for everything you keep providing, you have provided, and continue to provide. Uh, such an amazing uh, thing, Father God. Thank you for everything. Uh, you know, I thank you for this mission that you have called me to, uh, to preach the good news gospel, to share the word. That's uh, what I'm doing for the kingdom here. Uh, Father God, it's not about me, it's about you. And, and uh, as you laid the groundwork and this foundation, uh, we continue to uh, build up that foundation uh, and, again, spread the good news gospel. So thank you for this mission. Thank you for the calling. Thank you for the protection of the Wi-Fi, uh, all of that. Uh, Father God, is, uh, I'm always humbled and appreciative of these great opportunities I get to be here uh, with, you know, and just to share the word uh, with the church here. Uh, Father God, thank you for that. I want to pray for each and everybody here that are watching, hearing, listening to these podcasts, these messages, that something touches our heart and lifts them up. Uh, Father God, as we, you know, as we deal with our our situations, our trials, our tribulations, all the attacks that are out there, the evil that's out there, Father God, you are that light that we uh, need. And we search, and as we, again, always say, as we drop that net and pick up the cross and follow you. So I thank you this morning, Father God, for the opportunity I get to share this word, to share this message. Uh, it is awesome and just amazing. So thank you again. I appreciate all that. And again, always humbled here. Uh, and I uh, call us in Jesus' precious name, I pray right now. Amen and amen. All right, my friends, let me get a couple of volume level checks here. Um, again, new set of headphones, so I'm kind of excited about that. Uh, amen. And uh, let me go ahead and see if I can't get that fixed there. Amen. Uh, what do we got? Uh, let's see. I want to go. Um, let's go to our channel one. Get that church again. Checking volume levels here. Um, amen. Spreaker Channel 1, you guys are on the air. You are here. We're in church this morning. Mercy, my friends. Hope you had a great weekend. Hope you got a chance to go to church and hear that uh, precious word. Amen, friends. All right, well, let's get into it. Again, I appreciate you guys being here. A little after 2.40 a.m. Monday morning, Pastor Rick, Worldwide Live Ministry Podcast Network on uh, Restream TV this morning. We got YouTube, Blog Talk Radio, Spreaker, Anchor, CastBox, Twitter Live, LinkedIn Live, and a whole lot more. Uh, friends, you guys know right where you're at, and I appreciate you being here. Uh, amen. Let me go ahead and change out that uh, message there, or that spot. Uh, amen. Let's go on the go on the monitors here. Uh, hopefully, I'll get my uh, I'll get my backup tablet here. That's what I'm hoping for. One step at a time, I guess. You know, appreciate what I got, and that's always a good good thing. Amen. All right, so it did get fixed. Uh, I saw a little typo error or something like that in the uh, spelling here, uh, and I didn't. Uh, I didn't notice it before. So, anyway, uh, <laughs> let's get this straightened out and let's get into the Word, my friends. We're going to look again, friends. Our first opening set of scriptures here is how the Holy Spirit works in our lives. And, of course, uh, we're going to go actually into John, not Matthew, but John, uh, chapters 14 and 15 for our opening Bible study scripture this morning. Uh, amen and amen. And I know I've been getting some comments about the uh, headset. 
Uh, I was going to get the beats, and uh, the financial part of that didn't come through, but I was able to get these, which is a pretty big jump in from the other ones uh, compared with, uh, you know, prices, value, uh, sound quality. Uh, I've been listening back to the, uh, the you know, the, the volume levels and stuff from Channel 1 here, and uh, it's it's been a big jump. It's a good investment, and you know you got to kind of compromise uh, at times uh, with things. So that's what I did. The beats will come. <laughs> I'll get them eventually, but I'm not worried. Uh, you know, God provides. So anyway, if you're taking notes, my friends, let's get into a couple of things here. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and jump into this one. How the Holy Spirit. Uh, works in our lives. Amen. Let's get to it. Again, John 14 and 15 this morning is going to be our opening uh, scriptures there. So let's go ahead and, and get into that. Amen. All right. Now, the Bible uses three different Greek prepositions in the New uh, Testament to describe the different ways in which the Holy Spirit works uh, in our lives. Now, this verse shows two of these ways and a third. Let's see, two of these ways. There it is. And a third can be found elsewhere in Scripture. Number one, this is going to be one through three if you happen to be taking notes here. And I always hope you do as we are in uh, church this morning, my friends. Amen. So. Uh, number one, and again, the subtopic for this uh, message is how the Holy Spirit works in our lives. So let's look at it. Number one, uh, in the NLT recap series. Now, uh, he works with us as non-believers, friends, or para. Now, prior to our conversion to faith in Jesus uh, Christ, the Holy Spirit convicts us of our sin and reveals uh, the answer. John 16, verse 8. And then we've got uh, the next part here. Some might dismiss his prodding as that of one's conscience. Yet it is the Holy Spirit who opened our eyes to our terminally sinful condition. Right? Mm, mercy. Uh, exposing our need to turn our lives over to Jesus Christ, friends. Amen. Number two. Now, he comes into our lives when we turn to Christ. Uh, now, once we accept Jesus Christ as our Savior and invite him into our lives, the Holy Spirit comes and sets up residence, so to speak. And first, he starts the process of salvation in our hearts, friends. Now, Jesus said, I assure you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born again of the Spirit, uh, John 3, 5. Now, second, he assures us that we have done the right uh, thing. Scripture says uh, his Spirit joins with our spirit to affirm that we are God's children, friends. Now, Romans eight sixteen, of course. So he can begin changing us from inside out and develop the new um, natural or natural within. I believe that's what it says. Um, all right. Uh, now, number three, he will come upon, uh, let's see, he'll come upon sin and uh, empower us as believers. Now, or epi, as it says. Now, Jesus describes the dynamic empowering of the Holy Spirit upon our lives in Luke 24, 49, where he said, And now I will send the Holy Spirit just as my Father promised. And this is what the early Christians experienced in Acts chapter 2. All right. And it dramatically emboldened their witness to Jesus Christ, or for Jesus Christ. This power is available to believers today. Now, Scripture says of the, of the giving of His Spirit, the promises to you and to your children and even to the Gentiles, all who have been called by the Lord, our God, 
Acts 2.39. All right, so there you go, right out of the gate. Let's go to our Bible scripture, friends. And we'll see if I can't not knock everything over here. Um, <laughs> all right. So, uh, let's keep going. We've got, uh, what do we got? Luke, or John. Uh, right, is that John? That's what I want. All right, John chapter 14 and 15. And again, I am excited. I get the new Bible today, so I'll be changing that out and going back over some new notes. So, amen. All right, let's, uh, let's get into 14 and 15 here in the book of John. Now, Jesus is the way to the Father, friends. Now, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. I, in my Father's house are many mansions. And if not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. Amen. And if I go... And prepare a place for you. I will come again and receive you unto yourself. That where I am, there ye may be uh, also. And whither I go, ye know. And the way I know. Or what? And why? <laughs> and I. Uh, and the way you know. Now, I like I said, the notes are bad. So that's why I'm getting. I, I got the new Bible coming. And whither I go, ye know. And the way you know. Now, Thomas, as we know, doubting Thomas here, Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Now, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also, and from hence... Forth ye know him, and have seen him. And Philip saith unto him, Lord, shew us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Now Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long with you, and yet uh, hast thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me hath seen the Father, and how sayest thou then, Show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for thy very work's sake, or the very work's sake. Now verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Um, and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Uh, let's see. I shall, I believe, uh, let's see, I shall ask anything, right, something like that anyway, uh, I shall ask anything in my name, I will do it, or if ye, I believe that's if ye, uh, as my notes again, if ye shall ask anything in my name, he says, uh, I will do it. Now that's comfort, right? We we know that we've got that uh, that comfort there. All right, and I will pray the Father, and He shall give you another Comforter, uh, who He may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of Truth, whom. Uh, let's see, He <laughs> bad. Uh, whom He would cannot receive. Uh, because it seeth him, not neither knoweth him, but ye know him. For he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless, he says. I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But ye see me, because I live, ye shall live. And at that day... 
uh, ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. And he that hath my commandments, or keepeth my commandments, nope, it's hath my commandments, there it is, and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall, uh, let's see, shall he, or shall be loved of my Father. Uh, and I love him, and I will manifest myself to him. Now Judas saith unto him, not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that thou will, uh, wilt manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? And Jesus answered him and said, for unto him, uh, if a man love me, he, uh, he will keep my words and my father will love him and uh, we will come unto him and make our abode with him. He that loveth me, but not keepeth, uh, let's see, that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings, and the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, uh, seeing yet present, or being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Peace I leave you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, church. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If ye love me, ye would rejoice. Because I said, I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before uh, it come to pass, that when it come to pass, ye might believe. Therefore, I will not talk much with you, the, uh, for the Prince of the world cometh and hath nothing in me. But the world may know that I love the Father, and the Father uh, gave me commandment, even so I do. Arise, let us go hence. Amen. All right, so let's talk about the vine and the branches, friends. Now, he says in chapter 15 here, I am the true vine. And my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, uh, that it may bring forth uh, uh, more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word, which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as we uh, see as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, uh, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye accept, and a lot of notes in this one, uh, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, uh, for without uh, the, uh, let's see, I believe that's he, can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is sent forth, uh, his branch, and withereth, All right. uh, and to gather them. And cast them in to the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words are in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. As the Father hath loved me, so I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love. Even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. Now these things have I spoken unto you that my joy might uh, remain in you and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that ye love one another as I loved you. 
Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. And here's a, uh, a good point here, friends. Uh, ye are my friends. Um, let's see, it says in verse 14, Ye are my friends if ye do whatsoever I command of you. So command you. Now henceforth I call you not my servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth, but I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. Uh, ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth uh, fruit and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give you or give it you. They, uh, these things I command you that ye love one another. Now, we're going to get into the hatred of the world, which again, we clearly, clearly see, friends, every day the division for the last couple of years. Again, not going to dwell too much on it, but you all see what's going on with that, right? Uh, there is a huge, huge uh, division. Uh, and it's just started the last couple of years here. So uh, we need to be at peace, trust God, know that he's got us, and know that we have that eternal peace and you know uh, that God has given us. So we got to hold on, press in, dig in, no matter what. Uh, don't let the outside uh, situations, uh, you know, throw you off. So, uh, again, that's why uh, we really need the word of God here, friends. We really, really need to dig into the cross. So, as we see here, clearly, the hatred of the world. If the world hates you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. If ye were of the world, the world would love its own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. Uh, let's see. Therefore, the world hateth you. Now, remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent him or sent me. Uh, if I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin. But now they have no cloak or cover for their sin, right? Uh, he that hateth me hateth my father also. If I had done among them the works, I believe that's what that is, uh, the works which none other man did uh, had not had sin, or they had not had sin. But now uh, have they both seen and hated both me and my father. But this cometh to pass that the world might be fulfilled, uh, or the word might be fulfilled, that is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. Uh, but when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of men. And he shall also bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. And there you go, friends. Couldn't you get any clearer than that, right? Is our uh, commands and our word, and, you know, it's just right there. So, Matthew, or not Matthew, John uh, 14 and 15. All right. All right. A little bit of work here. Not much. Uh, after today, after this afternoon or this morning, whenever the mail shows up, I won't be doing this anymore. I'm excited finally again after all these years of uh, kind of digging into my old Bibles here. I am excited. New Bible coming today. And like I said, uh, I'll be going through that. Uh, it's a really nice Bible, actually. So I'm excited. Like I said, I I talk about it a million times. I'm excited to get it finally, 
uh, and it is uh, really nice to have it. So, hey, man, let's dig into our podcast notes, friends. Hey, Amen. We've got that. And then we're going to go into the Orthodox Study Bible. I haven't gotten into that in a long time. I haven't really uh, read that too much. Uh, so that is the plan. That's what we're going to check out. Let me grab some of that fresh brewed coffee this morning, my friends. How you doing? You are live on God's radio. I'm just a voice crying out in the wilderness with a little bit of coffee, of course. Amen. Excited to be here. Sharing the word of God this morning for your Monday morning. Uh, yes, I am. <laughs> Amen. You're there. I'm here. You're in Studio A. Good to see you. Pastor Rick, World Wildlife Ministry Podcast Network. Uh, on the air. Good to see you, friends. Live in full living color. Amen. I'm glad uh, to be here. Like I said, I do appreciate you guys. And, of course, all the replay viewers, you got to get a shout-out. I appreciate you guys as well. Block Talk Radio, uh, Restream TV, uh, boy, Spreaker, uh, LinkedIn, all the channels. You guys know where you're at. That's why I changed the last part of the title over to, to Network because I was networking through God's channels. Anyhow, let's get to our podcast notes and we want to go to the Lord's Prayer. Now, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And that's a tough one, but we got to do it. I uh, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Church, you know what time it is. Uh, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Whew. Amen and amen to that. Well, let's suit up and boot up, my friends. Let's go ahead and go grab Ephesians 6, 10 through 20. The armor of God. You got to do that every single day, friends. You put your feet on the ground. You thank God and you put your armor on. So let's go there right now. Ephesians 6, 10 through 20. All right, now finally, my brethren and sisters, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers uh, and against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand an evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod of the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked." And take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, which we know is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. And watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And for me that utterance may be given unto me. That I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. For which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak uh, boldly as I ought to speak. And amen for that. All right, let's go into a couple more here. Of course, uh, I want to hit the, uh, go into the Sinner's Prayer of Salvation, friends. Get a hold of me, Worldwide Live Ministry Podcast at yahoo.com, the official email for the ministry channel here. And of course, our Prayer lines are always open and available 24-7. Uh, amen and amen on that, right? So you guys can check that out. Sign up, sign in, uh, put your prayer requests in, whatever's, whatever thoughts you have, whatever questions you might have. I don't know if I'll get to uh, you know all of them right away, but I will answer those as I uh, take care of that myself. So amen. All right, so let's go to the Sinner's Prayer of Salvation, friends, as it is on the uh, uh, picture, or the uh, 
what do you call it? The post pick. So it just came to me. I'm like, oh, let's post that one up. Amen. All right. And again, it is good to be here, friends. Can't give the devil a, a pass too often or very little. No passes for the devil. We got to stay on it, stay the course, uh, and continue to fight this battle, friends. Because it's already won. God's got it. But, uh, you know, we got to be on our post. Amen. All right, dear God, I know that I am a sinner and I need a Savior. I want to turn away from my sinful life to the life you have planned for me. Please forgive me for my sins. Cleanse me of my past. Make me new. I know your son, Jesus Christ, died on the cross for me. Uh, and I believe in my heart that you raised him from the dead. And at this very moment, here you go, friends, right now, I accept, confess, and proclaim Jesus Christ as my uh, personal Lord and Savior. To live in my heart from this day forward. Thank you, Jesus, for your grace that has saved me from my sins and has given me eternal life. Please send your Holy Spirit to guide me and to help me to do your will for the rest of my life. Church, come on now. In Jesus' name, we pray right now. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. we got to get excited about this precious word, my friends. Amen and amen. All right. Now, let's uh, continue in our notes. And if I repeat it, it's okay. Okay, we did that. So let's go back to the serenity prayer, friends, right? All right, again, friends, Monday morning, September 12th. I missed yesterday. I uh, ended up uh, crashing out, slept right through the alarm clock. Uh, <laughs> And I, by the time I woke up, it was like after 1 or 2 or something this morning. I was like, eh, well, I think it was after 1.30. So I said, yeah, let's just set something for 2.30 and get everybody excited about the word. So, amen, that's why I'm here. So, uh, amen. On Restream TV, hanging out in Studio A this morning, friends. Amen. For your Monday morning service. Good to see you. Well, let's get some serenity, friends. Now, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. The courage to change the things I can. And the wisdom to know the difference. Living, of course, one day at a time. Enjoying one moment at a time. Accepting hardships as a pathway to peace. Taking as Jesus did the sinful world as it is, not as I would have it. Trusting that he will make all things right if I surrender to his will. That I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with him in the next. Uh, with him forever in the next. Amen. All right. I always like to jump into those. Good word. Amen. Okay. A little different here. I'm going to jump over to this one. I've got to move the clipboard out. If I can here, let's see if I got this one here. All right, there we go. Amen, friends. Lots of notes, lots of scriptures all over the place, of course. Uh, mercy. <laughs> well, let's see. Well, I already lost one note, but that's okay. I'm not going to need it. Uh, amen. All right, so we're going to dig into the Orthodox Study Bible. Long story, you guys know the history of that. I uh, ran into a uh, Orthodox uh, pastor and uh, just happened to have a couple of these uh, Bibles in his, uh, in his, uh, let's see. Oh, heck, hang on. All right, as my kids always say. Uh, I forgot where I was at. Uh, as I, I, you know, was out there, and he happened to have one of these in his in his uh, uh, car. So I said, I want one of those. Amen. Right. All right. And again with the with the mic. Hey, you know, eventually I'll I'll get that spot. I always talk about that, but hopefully, eventually, sometime I will. Anyway, let's go into this, uh, friends. Christ, our Passover. Let's check that out. Uh, amen. All right. 
Now, Passover, the central rite and symbol of Judaism, uh, is based on the experience of the liberation of the Hebrew people from bondage in Egypt. Exodus 12, 1 and 15, 21. A lot of scriptures on this, so I hope you're taking some notes. That's called Passover, both because the Lord passed over the homes of of the Hebrews, sparing them from death that came to the first born in Egypt, and because the Hebrews passed over the Red Sea as it were dry land. Now, Passover celebrates God's steadfast love and devotion to his people and their freedom in him, because we do have peace and freedom through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Without him, we were lost in the dark. Oh, my friends. And now through him, we have freedom and peace and contentment. Now, throughout the rest of the Old Testament, Passover preeminently signifies God's rescue and forging together of his chosen people, Israel. Now, the Lord's repeatedly brings this event to mind as he encouraged and exhorts his people to return to their convent, uh, conventional res, uh, responsibilities. That's a tongue twister. Uh, amen. Now, Judges 6, 7, 10, 1 Kings 10, 17, 19. Uh, Psalm 80, 10 and 11, and Jeremiah 11, 1, 8, and Micah uh, 6, 1, 8. And I'll give you guys, I'll share with you the whole, like all of the scriptures. Once I get through and read this part, I'll share the rest of it. Christ, our Passover, is the subject of this one out of the Orthodox Study Bible. Uh, amen. Now, uh, through his saving work, Christ becomes our Passover, or Pascha in Greek, as we know. Through him, we experience liberation from sin, death, and the devil. Now, Paul exclaims, Christ our Passover was sacrificed for us, therefore let us keep the feast. 1 Colossians 5, 7, and 8 now, he is the Paschal Lamb, as he says, the Paschal Lamb, uh, Isaiah 53, 7, and John 1, 29, Revelation 5, 6 to 14, who gave himself up in sacrifice once for all, Hebrews 10, 10, 14, to reconcile us with God at Every Pascha or Pascha Easter, uh, the church sings. Now, again, Orthodox study Bible, friends. I, I, I talked about this before. Uh, I was blessed enough to, uh, or blessed, that I was able to uh, get uh, the Bible from uh, a pastor. So that's my core. <laughs> I just remember. I just saw my cord like wrapped around my neck here. I'm like, oh, mercy. That's bad. Uh, anyway, so uh, again, out of the Orthodox study, but I'm going to go back and forth in that throughout the podcast here. I've done several. So today, a sacred Pashka is revealed to us, a new and holy Pashka, uh, or let's see, a, a mystical Pashka, a Pashka worthy of. As he says, a veneration, a Pashka, which is Christ the Redeemer. In many typological details, the Passover of the Jews clearly points towards Christ as our Passover. Now, the Passover lamb, this is, uh, again, going through one through four here. Number one, the Passover lamb, whose blood was smeared by the Hebrews on the doorstep or posts in the, the sign of... Um, of the cross was a male without blemish. Jesus was a male without blemish who died on the cross as he became the propitiation for our sins, friends. 
Uh, amen. Number two, now the blood of the Passover lamb saved the firstborn of the Hebrews from death. The blood of Christ saves all those believing in him from eternal death. That's Romans 5, 8, and 10. And 1 Peter 1, 17, 19. Now, number three, the Passover lamb had none of his bones broken. Exodus 12, 10, verse 46. Now, Jesus also had no bones broken as he was sacrificed. John 19, 31 through 36 for that. Number four, the Hebrews escaped from the burden of slavery in Egypt by passing uh, through the Red Sea. Christians pass from Egypt, from the burden of sin, being set free and saved through the waters of holy baptism, as we know, right? Uh, now, for the waters of baptism, we are uh, baptized into his death. All right. Crucified with him and raised up in the likeness of his resurrection, to walk in the newness of life. That's over in Romans 6, 3, 11. Now, John Chrysostom marvels at the power of Christ's blood, my friends. In the type of it had such great power in the midst of Egypt when smeared on the doorsteps. Uh, much more the reality of death so shuddered at the shadows Tell me, how would it not have dreaded the very reality? I believe that's what that is there. I'll have to fix that later. Now, this blood is the salvation, friends, the salvation of our souls. By it, the soul is washed and made beautiful and more gleaming than gold. Revelation seven thirteen and 14. Sustained and strengthened by the blood of Christ, our Passover, we resume daily um, our journey to the eternal promised land, the promised kingdom to come. Whew. Powerful, my friends. Powerful. If you're not woke up yet, that'll wake you up, my friends. Let's grab some coffee. Uh, amen. All right, let's, uh, again, I hope you have your notes with you. I hope your notebook, tablet, your pen, and all that. Uh, friends, I want to go ahead and give you the uh, the scriptures for this. Again, the topic, it's in Exodus chapter, uh, I believe chapter 11 and 12 talks about this. The uh, as, uh, as it is here, friends, Christ our Passover. Now, I'm going to give you all the scriptures, again, uh, as we have a Bible study this morning. Uh, I hope you have a your notebook tablets with you. Ezekiel, the first, uh, I'll give, like I said, I'll give you all these, and uh, of course, I'll, uh, you know, I'll go back over and make sure you got them. Now, 2 in Ezekiel, chapter 12, 1, and 15, 21 in the book of Ezekiel. Uh, Judges, chapter 6. Uh, verse 7 through 10, 1 Kings chapter 10, 17 through 19, uh, Psalm chapter 80, verse 10 and 11, Jeremiah chapter 11, 1 through 8, Micah chapter 6, 1 through 8, 1 Colossians chapter 5, 7 and 8. Uh, Isaiah chapter 53, 7, and then we got John 1, 29, Revelation 5, 6 through 14 again, uh, Hebrews chapter 10, uh, verse 10 through 14, Romans chapter 5, 8 through 10, 1 Peter chapter 1, 17 through 19, Exodus chapter 12, 10 through 46. John chapter 19, 31 through 36. Romans chapter 6, 3 through 11. And Revelation again, chapter 7, 
uh, verse 13 and 14. There it is, friends. A lot of scriptures for this one. Uh, it was very exciting. I like that. Uh, amen. And again, it was in 12, uh, friends. If you go to Exodus chapter 12, uh, you can get all the, you know, the, the background of this uh, Christ or Passover. Amen. What a good, uh, what a good st uh, study there. All right, let me roll on over here so I don't spill nothing. And, of course, all right, uh, let's see, clipboards on the other side of the wall. I have to make sure I grab that right. Amen, oh, amen. Oh, all right, uh, so we are live. Anchor Cast Box, you're on the air. It is good to be here in the studio. All right, Christ, our Passover, friends. That's our uh, part one here, as we are. Well, let's keep going. I do have a lot more for you. We're going to look at, uh, as I, I want to make sure I don't lose my spots here. Amen. All right, uh, 2 Corinthians. Let's check that out. Let's go to that. Amen. All right, well, I hope you got to church yesterday, uh, real important, and I know we went through 9-11, uh, remembering 9-11, uh, amen, right? Never forgotten, gone but not forgotten, friends, we got to remember 9-11, uh, very important, uh, amen. All right, so four and five, amen. All right. Uh, let's see if I can maneuver around all this stuff without spilling it, right? You're getting to it. All right. Second, is it second? Second Corinthians chapter four and five here, friends. Let's go ahead and read that. And I'll give you a minute. When you get there, give me a big amen. Hallelujah. It's Monday. Let's get going, friends. Let's keep going here. We've got a, a quite a, a bit of a Bible study, uh, this morning. Uh, amen. So let's read uh, 2 Corinthians 4 and 5 as we are living by faith, friends. Amen. All right. God's power in the ministry. Now, therefore, seeing we have this ministry as we have received mercy, we faint not, friends. But we... Uh, we have what? What do we do? Uh, let's see. Um, we have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, not handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, church, it is hid to them that are lost, amen, in whom the God of this world, which we know is the devil, Satan, uh, hath blinded the minds, watch this, blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, um, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Now watch this in verse 5. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in their hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Now, living by faith, friends, not by sight. Live by faith, friends, not by sight. All right, Anchor Cast Box, you guys are about to close out part one here for, uh, what do we got, uh, Monday morning, September 12th. Uh, we're going to keep the cameras rolling. We're going to keep everything going. We've got another hour, uh, I believe at least another hour and a half or so uh, here tonight, this morning. Uh, we're going to keep going, keep rolling, and uh, lots to cover. A lot more scriptures this morning for you. 
live on Restream TV, friends. Doing a double shot Monday. Uh, I'll be back later on tonight, sometime after 10, uh, if I don't fall asleep, right? Uh, hang on, I got a feedback going on. Amen. Let me check all the devices. There it is. All right. Uh, let's see. Had a, something going on back there. Back into my. Oh, there's my monitor. My monitor earpiece, uh, which I need in there, so I can actually hear what's going on with the uh, mixer there. I think that was. That's what that was. It was tickling or something. I don't know what that was. Uh, anyway, that's how I hear uh, the mixer is through this uh, through this set here. So, amen. I know it looks a lot complicated, but it's not really. It's not for me anyway. It's just pretty much, uh, pretty much uh, what I've been used to. So, amen. To give you guys the best quality I can think of. All right. So let's continue. We got uh, living by faith here. Now, again, 2 Corinthians 4, I believe 4, uh, 4 and 5. So, we're going to cover that. Amen. All right. Amen. All right. Looks okay. I look all right. <laughs> I don't. Not a fashion show, but I just want to make sure everything's working uh, well here. All right. Living by faith, let's continue. 2 Corinthians, friends, uh, chapter 4 and 5. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Uh, always bearing about the body of the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of of also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So then death worketh in us, but life in you, and of course Jesus there, we have the same spirit of faith according as it is written. I believed, and therefore I have spoken. We also believe, and therefore speak, knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus and shall present us with you. All right. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundance grace might, through the thanksgiving of many, redound in the glory of God. For which cause we faint not, but through our outward man, or though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh in us, or for us, a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, now watch this, friends. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal. It's temporary. It's going to pass. Right? But the things which are seen are eternal. Uh, so don't let your moments have you, friends. That's the bottom line on that one. Don't let your moments. You have your moments, but don't let the moments have you. You know, just trust God. Trust the process. He'll get you through it. Uh, amen. Amen. And let's roll on to chapter 5. Uh, amen, friends. Chapter 5, 2 Corinthians this morning. Uh, amen. For we know, uh, let's see, for we know that if an earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be called upon, with our house, which is from heaven. If so, be that we, uh, being clawed, we shall not be found naked. Uh, for we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, 
not for that we would be unclawed, but clawed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Now he that hath wrought us for the selfsame thing is God, who also hath given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. Therefore we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, church, and not by sight. Right? Come on now. For we, In verse 7, for we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing neither to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Wherefore we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. For we must all, now watch this, this is the key here. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that every uh, one may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. We got to deal with it, my friends. Now, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God. And I trust also are made manifest in our on your conscience, for ye, uh, we commend not ourselves again unto you, uh, but give you occasion to glory in our behalf that ye may have somewhat uh, to answer them which glory in appearance and not in heart. Now, for whether we be beside ourselves, it is to God, or whether we be sober, it is to your cause. For the love of Christ constraineth, uh, and he uh, must, I can't even read this part here. I'll have to go back over this. Um, Thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Amen. Rose again. Amen. All right. Uh, let's see. Now, wherefore, hence, know, uh, know we no man after the flesh, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, right? Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and hath given us uh, to, let's see, go back over this again. I uh, have given to us the ministry of reconciliation, to wit that God was in Christ, uh, reconciling the word and world unto himself, not imputing uh, their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now, then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did, did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's steed, be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, but that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. What a great scripture. Just awesome. Just awesome. All right. 2 Corinthians 4 and 5. Fresh off the dial, my friends. All right, we got a little bit more here. A little bit, something, something for y'all. Let's go to the book of Philippians, friends. Let's keep moving on. We got Philippians chapters 1 or 1. Um, let's see. So Philippians chapter 1, 1 through 30. As I like to give you a lot of scriptures. As I get them, I like to share them with you guys. Amen. What time do we got? All right. Plenty of time. Let's keep rolling. You're in your first, second hour here. Uh, Monday morning, the 12th of September. 
I am still your host, Hanging Out Studio A, Pastor Rick here, World Wildlife Ministry Podcast Network on Restream TV for first service, the Monday morning first service here, broadcasting live across God's radio, my friends. I am just a voice crying out in the wilderness, make straight the path, the highway for our Lord. Amen? Come on now. Let's bring it on in, friends. How about uh, chapter one? Uh, if I don't get caught up in all my cords, oh, mercy. Let me see if I can uh, kind of maneuver around here a second. Uh, lots of cables and wires and cords and all kinds of things going on here this morning. Um, mercy, let's see if I can get that out here. Ah. Uh, <laughs> I never know, my friends. I never know. Uh, let's see. I think that'll be okay. I'm hopefully not uh, going to wrap up too much. All right. Let's keep rolling again, friends. Philippians chapter 1, 1 through 30. Now, Paul and Timothy, the servants of Jesus Christ, uh, to all the saints in Christ, Jesus, which are at Philippi, with the bishops and deacons. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, now, thanksgiving and prayer. Now, uh, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you, all making requests with joy. For your fellowship in the gospel for the first day until now, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you. Now remember this, friends. Uh, it's verse 6. Being confident of this very thing, uh, he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Again, Philippians chapter 1 here. Uh, now, even as it is meet for me to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart, right? Inasmuch as both in my bonds and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, ye are all partakers of my grace. Now, for God is my record, how greatly I long after you, all in the bulls of Jesus Christ, and this I pray that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and all judgment, that you may approve things that are excellent, that you may uh, be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. Now to me to live is Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness which are by Jesus Christ unto the glory and praise of God, uh, but I would you should understand, brethren, in the things I, uh, let's see, where is it at? Uh, which happen unto me have fallen out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel, so that my bonds in Christ are manifest in all the palace and in all other places. And many of the brethren in the Lord, waxing confident, why my bonds are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Some indeed preach Christ even of envy and strife, and some also of goodwill. The one preach Christ of contention, not sincerely, uh, supposing to add all affliction to my bonds, but the other of love, knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel. What then, notwithstanding every way, whether it in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached, and I therein also do rejoice and will rejoice. For I know that this shall turn my salvation to my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit, friends, the supply of the Spirit. Of Jesus Christ, according to my earnest expectation of my hope, and that there is nothing I shall be uh, assuredly, I believe, or ashamed, that with all boldness as always, so also, uh, or how also Christ shall be 
um, magnified in my body, whether it be life or by death. All right. For to me, to live is Christ, friends, and to die is gain. But if I live in the flesh, uh, this is the fruit of my labor. Yet what I shall choose, I wot not. For I am in a strait betwixt two, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. And having this confidence, I know that I shall abide and continue with you, all for your furtherance and joy of faith that your rejoicing may be more abundant in Jesus Christ for me by coming to you again. Exhortation to steadfastness. Now, that's the key, friends. Steadfastness. Amen. Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ, that whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs, that ye stand uh, fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel, and in nothing terrified by your adversaries, which is to them an evident token of perdition, but to you of salvation and that of God. For unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake, having the same conflict which ye saw in me, and now here to be in me. All right. Amen. So there you go. What a great, another great scripture. All right. Uh, let's see. We're going to go backwards a little bit here. Like I said, a lot of, a lot of scriptures to cover this morning. Uh, what do we want? All right, give me a second. We're going to get to the next scripture, friends. I think we're going to be over in Luke 14. How about that this morning? Amen? All right, Luke 14. Uh, let's check it out. All right, are you with me, brothers and sisters, this morning? We are having some church in the house. Amen? Ah, uh, let's keep going. We got that fresh cup of coffee. Still there. <laughs> All right. Amen, friends. Like I said, there's nothing like a fresh brewed cup of coffee and the fresh word of God, my friends. Amen. All right. Let's uh, keep rolling here. Uh, excited to be with you this morning. Excited to kind of jump on quite a bit early. I know I kind of shocked my friend in Japan. Uh, she's like, are you okay? Do you know what time it is? I said, hey, I'm on God's time. I got to roll with the clock there. Uh, <laughs> and she kind of gave me a hard time. She's like, you know, it's pretty early. And I said, no, not, not for what God got me, uh, working here. Not, you know, not for, uh. Not for what he's got me on. Amen. All right, checking the monitor here. Kind of maneuvered some stuff around here, so I got everything kind of right there. Amen. All right, let's keep rolling, my friends, this morning. Um, we are going to be in uh, Luke chapter 14. Jesus heals a man with the dropsy, as he says here. Uh, Luke 14, 1 through 35. Let's keep rolling, friends. Now, and it came to pass, as he went into the house of one of the chief Pharisees to eat bread on the Sabbath day, that they watched him. And behold, there was a certain man before him which had the dropsy. And Jesus answering spake unto the lawyers and Pharisees, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath day? Again, uh, let me grab a couple of notes here. And let me take a couple of quick notes here. 
That way, basically, all I'm going to do is be transferring everything over to the new Bible I'm getting. That's going to be awesome. All right, so let's keep going. we got verse 4 here. Uh, Luke 14, right? Luke 14 this morning. And they held their peace, and he took him, and healed him, and let him go, and answered them, uh, saying, Which of you shall of an ox, let's see, a donkey or an ox, fallen into a pit, and will not straightway pull him out on the Sabbath day? And they could not answer him again to these things. Now, Jesus teaches humility. Now, he put forth a parable to those which were bidden, which he marked how they chose out to the, out the chief rooms, saying unto them, When thou hidden of any man to a welding or a wedding, sit not down in the highest room, that I am more honorable, uh, man, than thou be bidden in him or of him. Uh, he that bade thee and him come and say to thee, Give this man place, and thou begin with shame to take uh, the lowest room. But when thou art bidden, go and sit down in the lowest room, and when he that uh, bade thee cometh, he may not say unto them, Friend, go up higher, and thou shalt have worship in the presence of them that sit at meat with thee. For whosoever exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. There's the key. He that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Uh, then, in verse 12, Then said he also to them that bade him, when thou makest a dinner or a supper, uh, call not thy friends, nor the brethren, neither the kinsmen, nor thy rich neighbors, lest they uh, also be again, and a recompense be made thee. And when thou makest a feast, call the poor, and maimed the lame, the blind, and thou shalt be blessed. But I cannot recompense thee, for... Thou shall be recompensed at the resurrection of the just. Now, the parable of the great supper. And when one of them that sat at meat with him heard these things, he said uh, unto him, Blessed is he that shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. He said he unto them, or then said he unto them, a certain man made a great supper and bade many uh, and sent his servants uh, supper. Uh, I say to them, they were bidden, come for all things are now ready. And they all with one consent began to make excuse. The first said unto him, I have brought a piece of ground or bought a piece of ground and I must needs go and see it. I pray thee have me excused. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I go to prove them. I pray thee have me excused. And another said, I have married uh, thy wife, and therefore I cannot come. So that servant came and showed uh, his Lord these things that the master of the house being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city and bring in hither the poor and the maimed and the, um, the uh, halt, I believe, um, and the blind. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come that my house may be filled. For I say unto you that none of those men which were bidden shall taste of my supper. Counting the cost. Again, as we are in Luke 14 this morning. 
And there went great multitudes with him, and he turned and said unto them, If any man come to me, and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, in his own life also he cannot be my disciple. And whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. That's what we got to ask yourself, friends. Are we truly walking after the Lord? Are we uh, searching and are we looking diligently? So, as he says, um, let's see, let's kind of go back up here just a bit. In 27, whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Now, he makes that very clear, friends, very clear here. Uh, of which of you intending to build a tower sitteth not down first and count the cro- or counteth the cost, whether ye have sufficient to finish it. Lest happily, after he hath laid the foundation uh, and is not able to finish it all, that behold, it began to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. That the king going to make war against another king sitteth down first and consulteth whether he be able to, uh, let's see, able with 10,000 uh, to, um, let's see, meet him that cometh against him with 20,000? Or else, whilst the other is yet a great way off, he sendeth an, um, uh, an ambassage, I believe, and desireth conditions of peace. So likewise, whosoever he be of God that forsaketh not uh, all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. Salt is good, he says, but if the salt hath lost its savor, wherewith uh, wherewith shall it be seasoned? It is neither fit for the land nor yet for the dunghill. But men cast it out. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. There you go. That's the key, friends. Amen. And we are going to roll back over to the other book here in a second. Um, <laughs> let me see this. Conversation. Right. Give me a minute. We're going to go back into the NLT uh, recap series here this morning, friends. Got a few more for you. Uh, amen. Just kind of keeping an eye on the clocks here, and I got to do that. I right, got plenty of time. Uh, let's look at this. All right. Mm, mm, mm. Conversation. Uh, we're going to pick up right again. And um, oh, there it is. Ah, my shirt was kind of rolled up on me a little bit there. Ah, mercy. Something. Always something, right? All right. Uh, <laughs> Well, I can't do much about it. I'm live on the air, my friends. Live on Restream TV this morning. Amen. All right. So, subtopic is going to be cover. Let's see, conversation. And uh, there's about four, uh, six, seven. There's seven on this this morning. Amen. Now, as a Christian. It is extremely important that you uh, are a representative of Jesus Christ. One of the more visible ways you're representative is through your speech or conversation or conversations. It has been said that every person speaks about 30,000 words in an average day. This is considerable amount of time. Uh, of representation time, especially when you consider the power of the spoken word. 
Now, with our mouths, we have the power, friends. We have the power to build up or to, des to destroy. And this should give you even greater motivation to weigh your words carefully, friends. Before you speak, think about it. Amen. Just saying. Before you speak, then, then the Bible shares some practical advice when it comes to controlling your tongue. Uh, below are uh, some scriptures to guide you in this area. Now, let's look at the first one. Uh, think before you speak, friends. You demonstrate great wisdom and care when you weigh your words, as it is in 1 Timothy 4.12. To control your tongue, control your tongue, friends. As you learn to control your tongue, you will be able uh, to control other aspects of your life as you look at James 3, 1, 12. 3, refrain from idle talk, gossip, water cooler gossip. I hear a lot of that. I've talked about that before. Uh, I've been dealing with that, you know, that... Uh, uh, what is it? I've been dealing with that uh, quite a bit. Uh, amen, amen, right? Uh, so, as as we carefully choose our words, refrain from idle talk. We will be held accountable for every idle word we speak. That's over Matthew 12, 35, 37. Make a habit of, he says, make a habit of talking about the Lord. Uh, friends, I know we're in the world, but we're not of it. we got to talk about the Lord every chance we get. That's why I do the podcast, uh, because my friends were always uh, kind of, you know, messing with me. And, ah, you talk too much. Yeah, you're right. I talk about God every opportunity I get to anybody that will listen. Amen? So, make a habit of talking about the Lord. Uh, when we talk about the Lord and his blessings with one another, God is pleased. Acts 11, 20. And uh, I believe that's five. Keep your conversations gracious. We should speak gently and sensibly as we share f our faith with others. Colossians 4, 6. And six, which is a tough one. It's a big one. I hear a lot of that. Uh, never use vulgar speech. Now, our conversations need to reflect God's goodness, not the world's coarseness. First uh, Peter 3.10 and 7. Think of ways to encourage, praise, and build up others. Now, as a Christian, friends, you should use your speech constructively. That's going to be over in 1 Thessalonians 5.11. So there you go. A little bit of wisdom for you this morning, friends. A little bit of advice. Uh, take heed to how you talk, friends. Watch your tongue. Uh, again, I hear so much of that. Uh, you know, again, I talked about it plenty of times. People that claim to be Christians and pastors and uh, in preachers still cussing like the world, still doing the thing, you know, and then I think there's a song about it too, you know, go to church on Sunday and go to the bars on Monday or something like that. We got to, we got to watch friends. We got to be careful of the words we use and, and how we use them and where we use them and when, uh, and, uh, you know, you claim to be a Christian will walk the walk and don't just talk the talk. So, you know, or something like that. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Uh, anyway, you just got to be careful and, and choose your words wisely. All right. Uh, <laughs> before I go off on a tangent this morning, we're going to keep it right to the Bible here. Uh, always gets me aggravated and a little upset uh, about that because, you know, Sometimes I got a real idiot and I get so upset about that, you know, but uh, it's not for me to worry about. It's not for me to, uh, you know, 
worry about it or stress out about it, watching other people do their thing and not uh, walk in the Word of God, uh, friends. And, um, you know, <laughs> it's it's hard to reel it in, you know, but uh, I got to do it. So, amen. So, we got, um, what do we got? We're in First Peter. And we're looking at chapter 1 and 2, friends. 1 and 2 this morning again as we go into some word, friends. A little bit of church service this morning. All right. Uh, again, First Peter chapters 1 and 2. Now, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, uh, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and uh, Bithynia, elect according to the knowledge of God the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace unto you and peace be multiplied. Salvation wrought by Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now, let me catch this uh, spot right here. Amen. All right. Got to make sure all this is uh, kind of fixed while I got a chance here, for sure. All right. So, uh, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant uh, mercy hath begotten us again into a lively hope by the resurrection, friends, of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. Uh, let's see, now who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time, wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now, for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations, every day, right? That the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold, that persisteth, uh, or perisheth it, uh, though it be tried with fire, might be found into uh, praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, uh, whom having not seen, ye love, in whom now, uh, let's see, though now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy, unspeakable and full of glory receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls, of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you, searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ, which was in them, did signify when it testified beforehand in the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow unto whom it was revealed, that not unto themselves, but unto us, they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached uh, the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost, set down from heaven which things the angels desire to look into. Now call, a call to Christian dedication, friends. Are you dedicated to Christ? Are you diligently seeking him? Right? Come on now. Uh, amen. So, let's continue in 13. I think that's, uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Da -da 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 -da. All right, let's just go back over 12 again. Unto whom it was revealed, but not unto themselves, but unto us they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven, which things the angels desire to look into. Uh, I believe, I think that's where I left off. So we're just going to roll with that and keep moving here. Um, All right. 
if I forgot it, you guys could go back and look at it yourselves there and kind of, uh, you know, study that on your on your time there. All right, and 13, wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts, in your ignorance. Again, the key uh, with your ignorance. So, in 15, But as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. Uh, if ye call on the Father, who without respect of persons, judgeth according to every man's work, Pass the time of your sojourning uh, here in fear. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as we were bought at a price, my friends. We can't forget that. But with the precious blood of Christ, as a lamb without blemish and without spot, uh, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but manifest in the last time for you, who by him believe in God that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory, that your faith and hope might be in God, seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth, through the Spirit unto an unfeigned love of the brethren, see that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. Now, being born again, church, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth uh, forever. For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of men uh, as the flowers of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. Gonna sneeze. Boy, I feel a sneeze in aisle three. I don't know what that is this morning. I don't know. Uh, amen. Now, wherefore, in chapter two. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings. Uh, I gotta check my notes, make sure we're going there. Uh, let's see. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that she may grow thereby, if so be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Now Christ the living stone, to whom coming as unto a living stone disallowed indeed of men, chosen of God and precious friends, ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore, also it is contained in the scripture, friends. Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Unto you, therefore, which believe is he precious, but unto them which is dis, uh, be disobedient, a stone which the builders disallowed, the same as made the head of the corner and a stone of stumbling, and a rock of offense. Even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedience, obedient, whereunto also they were appointed. God's own people. Uh, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth of the praises of him, who hath called you out of the darkness into this marvelous light, friends, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God. 
which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Dearly beloved, as he says, Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts, which war against the soul. Having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may be your good works, which they shall behold glorify God in the day of visitation. Submit yourselves to every ordinances of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme, or unto governors as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of the evildoers, or of evildoers, and for the praise of them that do well. For so is the will of God that uh, with well-doing ye may be put, uh, let's see, uh, put by silence the ignorance of foolish men, as free and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, uh, but as the servants of God. All right, honor all men. I do, let's see, do the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. The example of Christ's sufferings, in verse 18 here. Servants, be subject to your masters with all fear, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the froward. For this is thankworthy, if a man for conscience forward God, toward God, endure grief, suffering wrongfully. For what glory is it, if when ye be buffeted for your faults, ye shall take it? Uh, patiently, as we continue. But if when ye do well and suffer for it, you take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again when he suffered, he threatened not, but continually uh, himself committed himself to him that judged uh, righteously, who his own self bare our sins in his own body on the tree, uh, that we, being dead to sin, uh, or sins, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye uh, were healed. For ye are as sheep going astray, uh, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. Oh, what a good scripture. What a great scripture, friends, that is. That's just awesome. Uh, man, all right, so we've got a few more left. Uh, let's see. One, two, six. few more for you. Um, amen. All right, we're going to the book of Galatians this morning, friends. I want to get a couple. Uh, we got two more uh, scriptures left, but we'll see how it goes here. Uh, Galatians 1 through 3. Let's go ahead and check that out. Um, amen. All right, and of course, there it is. Um, let's see. And again, I got a gnat uh, that just got me on the back of my head right here. Oh, mercy. Them critters, I tell you. I got my fly swatter sitting, standing by here, so I'm ready for them. All right, uh, all right. So Galatians one through three this morning. We're going to continue. Uh, I'm going to try to roll on through here. A little bit of the critters, but that's uh, all right. Uh, amen. All right. So Paul, an apostle of uh, let's see, an apostle not of men, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead. That all the brethren which are with me under the church of Galatia, 
Grace be to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins, as we know, that he might deliver us from the present uh, present world according to the will of God and of the Father, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. There is no other gospel. I marvel that ye are soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ uh, unto another gospel, which is not another, uh, but there uh, be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. Uh, but though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel, we know this one, friends, unto you than that which we have preached, unto you let him be accursed. As we said before, so I say now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you uh, than uh, then ye have preached, let him be accursed accursed for do i now persuade men or god or do i seek to please men for if i yet pleased men i should not be the servant of christ paul's ministry of the true gospels we are in galatians chapters 1 2 and 3 but i certify you brethren that the gospel which we preached unto me is not after man for I neither received it of man, neither have I taught it, uh, by the revelation of Jesus Christ. For ye have heard of my conversation in time past in the Jews' religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it, and profited in the Jews' religion above many my requests of mine own. Um, let's see, of my own revelation, or notion, I think that's what it is. All right, uh, being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my father, but whom is, when it has pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to reveal his son in me, that he might preach him among the heathen, Immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood, neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which are apostles before me. But I went unto Arabia and returned again unto Damascus. Then after three years I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and abode with him fifteen days. But other of the apostles saw I none saved. Uh, James, the Lord's brother. Now the things which I write unto you, behold, before God I lie not. Afterwards I came into the regions of Syria and, uh, where is it at, uh, Cilicia, and was unknown by face unto the church of Judea, where were in Christ, but they heard only, but be which persecuted us in times past, now preacheth, the faith which once he destroyed. And they glorified God in me. And let's go on to chapter 2 in the book of Galatians this morning. Amen. And let's maneuver that down. Now, then, 14 years after I went up again to Jerusalem uh, with Barnabas and took Titus with me also, and I went up by revelation and communicated uh, unto them with that gospel, which I preach among the Gentiles, but privately to them, um, let's see, which were of reputation, lest by any means I should run or had run in vain. Now, but neither Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. And that because of false brethren unawares brought in who came in privily to spy uh, out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us unto bondage, 
to whom we gave place by subjection, no, not for an hour, that the truth of the gospel might continue with you, but of these who seem to be somewhat, uh, whosoever they were, it maketh no matter to me, God accepteth no man's person. For they who seem to be somewhat in conference added nothing to me. But contrarywise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me, as the gospel of circumcision was unto Peter. For he that wrought effectually in uh, Peter in the apostleship of the circumcision, the same was mighty in me toward the Gentiles, or of course the non-Jews. Uh, amen. Now when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me, they gave to me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship, that we should go unto the heathen, that they unto the circumcision. Only they would that we should remember the poor, the same which I also was forward to do. Now, Paul rebukes Peter at Antioch. But when Peter, hang on here, friends. Let me turn that volume down just a little bit. Uh, amen. All right, give me a second. Let me make sure that's, I got to make sure that volume level's not too loud. Go to our tester. Amen. There it is. All right. Got the church on its feet. Still here. Amen. Good to see you guys. All right. All right. Got to do a volume check every once in a while. Make sure everything's working here. All right, what do we got left at 4.30 a.m., friends, on your dial? Good morning, good morning, good morning. It is Monday. Good to see you live on the air this morning. We got Restream with us, YouTube, of course, all the channels. We're here having some coffee, going over some Bible study this morning, friends. I wanted to start your Monday off right, you know, as we get into the Lord this morning. And that fresh brewed cup of coffee always a treat amen let's continue i think we got one more after this i won't be too long for you friends but uh, i do want to make sure i get in here this morning so let's continue we are in galatians 1 2 and 3 all right, so as we go back to 07, but contrary wise, when you see the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me, as the gospel of circumcision was unto Peter. For he that wrought effectually in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision, the same was mighty in me towards the Gentiles. And when James, Cephas, and John, uh, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me, they gave to me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship, that we should go unto the heathen, that they unto the circumcision. Only they would that we should remember the poor, the same which I also was forward to do. Again, Paul rebukes Peter to Antioch, verse 11. But when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to the face because he was to be blamed. For before that certain came from James, he did eat with the, uh, with the Gentiles. But when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision. And the other Jews uh, disassembled the wise with him, inasmuch as Barnabas also was carried away with them uh, and disillusioned, I believe, or disillation right? Dissimulation. There it is. Uh, and when I saw that they walked, uh, walked uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter before them all, and let's go to the next page here, if I can get there. Uh, amen. Hold that thought, my friends. Give me a second. My pages don't cooperate with me this morning. 
There it is. Uh, mercy. If, <laughs> if thou, let's continue. Uh, if thou, being a Jew, livest after the manner of Gentiles, and not as do the Jews, why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? Justification is not of the law. Now we, who are Jews by nature and not sinners of the Gentiles, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, uh, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even as we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. Uh, but by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. But if while we seek to be justified in Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners. If or is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. I just realized my cord is still stuck around my neck. And I just, as I looked at the monitors, uh, I realized that it was still kind of stuck there. And that's why I, I finally went, ah, oh, it's still there and moving it. Anyhow, let's keep going. So, destroy and make myself... A, let's see, let's kind of go back to 18. For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. For I, through the law, am dead to the law, that I... Uh, let's see. I might live unto God. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live... Uh, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Boy, I tell you, friends, uh, amazing. All right, chapter 3, Freedom from the Law. O oh, foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that ye should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth crucified among you? This only what I learn of you, received ye the spirit of the works of the law or by the uh, hearing of faith. Are ye so foolish, having begun in the Spirit? Um, let's see. Are ye now made perfect by the flesh? Have ye suffered so many things in vain, that uh, it be yet in vain? Uh, he, therefore, that ministereth to you the Spirit and worketh miracles among you, doeth he that by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. God's covenant with Abraham. Even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness, know ye therefore that ye which are of faith, the same are of the children of Abraham. And the scripture foreseeing that God abideth justify the heathen through faith. Preached before the gospel unto uh, Abraham saying in the shall all nations be blessed so then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham as or for as many uh, as are of the works of the law are under the curse for it is written cursed is every one that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law that do them but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident for the just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree. Now, that the blessing of Abraham might come uh, on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. 
Now, brethren, I speak after the manner of men, though it be but a man's covenant. Yet it be confirmed that no man disannuleth or addeth thereto. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not, and, uh, let's see, and to seeds as many, as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. And this I say in the con uh, covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ, the law, which are 430 years after, cannot disannul, that it should make the promise of none effect. Uh, for the, uh, let's see, for the inheritance be of the law, is no more a promise, but God gave it uh, to Abraham by promise. Now, purpose of the law. Wherefore, uh, then serveth the law. It is some added because of transgressions, to the seed should come to the promise that was made, as it was uh, ordained by angels uh, in the hand of, let's see, of the mediator. There it is. Now a mediator is not a mediator in one, but uh, God is one. Is the law then against the, uh, pro let's see, the promises of God? God forbid, right? For if, let's fix that. For if there had been a law given which could have been given life, verily righteousness should have been in the law. The scripture hath included all uh, in sin or made sin, that the promises by faith of Jesus Christ uh, might be given to them that... Oh, boy. Um, let's see. Betrayed, I believe. That be, uh, behave. Uh, well, I knew that's what I said, friends. I've been struggling with this Bible for a while, and that's why I said it was time to order a new one and uh, get that new uh, new Bible coming in. So it should be here today. Uh, but more faith came. We were kept under the law, shut up under the faith, which should afterwards be revealed. Now, wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. We might be justified by faith. But after the faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. For ye are all children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Uh, for as many of you as been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. Uh, let's see, there is neither bond nor free, neither is uh, male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. What a great scripture, Galatians chapters 1, through and, one 2, and 3 there. Amen. All right, I uh, think we're okay there. Revelation 8. Revelation 8. Uh, this morning, getting into the Word, my friends. Got a, maybe one more uh, for you. Let me check uh, our clocks here. Amen. Uh, a little after two hours. Pretty typical of the podcast scheduling here. Let's go to 8, friends. Maybe we'll just close out in Revelation 8 this morning, and I'll add the other one on to the next podcast. Uh, I do have just one more, but I think we'll we'll close out with this one. I think that'll be a good, uh, good two-hour Bible study. Lots of scriptures to throw your way, friends, just in case. All right, so let's close out uh, Revelation chapter 8 this morning, friends. Pastor Rick Worldwide Live Ministry Podcast Network on the air, Restream TV. Always good to be here, friends. Always good to share the Word of God with you and leave you a little bit of study here. 
All right, seventh seal in Revelation 8, friends. And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of a half an hour. Uh, And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them which were given seven trumpets. Uh, And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer. And there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense was come with the prayers of the saints, ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. And when the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it into the earth, and there there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. Um, Now the trumpets and the seven angels, which had the seven trumpets, prepared themselves to sound the trumpets. Uh, The first angel sounded, and there followed hail and fire mingled with blood, and they were uh, cast upon the earth. And the third part of the trees were burnt up, and all the grass was burnt up. And the second angel sounded, and it was a great mountain burning Fire and cast into the sea, and the third part of the sea became blood. And the third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died. Uh, and the third part of the, um, let's see, um, of the, <laughs> boy, I can't wait to get that, that new Bible. Um, the shines were destroyed. Uh, And the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp. And it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters. And the names of the stars called Wormwood, and the third part of the waters became Wormwood. Uh, And many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. And the fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten, and the third part of the moon, and the third part of the stars, so as the third part of them were darkened. Uh, And the day shone not for a third part of it, and the third night likewise. And I beheld, and uh, I heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, church, Woe! Woe, woe, to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of other voices, of the trumpet of the three angels, which are yet to sound. Mercy, my friends. Boy, oh boy, I tell you, pretty amazing. All right. Um, Let's get that thunder. We gotta get that thunder. All right, my friends, that'll do it. It's a wrap. Quarter to 5 a.m., my friends. Got a lot more for you, but we're going to close out right here. Uh, I will uh, reset that last podcast uh, or the last scripture. First Thessalonians chapter 1 and 2. That is going to be your opener for tonight's podcast, uh, friends. Amen. And... Amen. All right, get a little bit of notes there. And we're going to roll on over to the next message here uh, for sure. And what do we got? Um, Let's see. Take a couple little quick notes here so I I can write this, remember what I'm writing here anyway. Um. Amen. Give me just a second. You know the drill, my friends, before we close everybody out here. I appreciate you guys being here with me this morning. Thought I'd start your Monday out right, my friends, as you get to your drive, wherever you're going, wherever you're getting to work there. Uh, I wanted to just kind of give you guys a little bit of a study here again. On this fabulous Monday morning early I know, like I said, friends, my friend uh, was online.
And she's like, uh, do you know what time it is? Are you okay? I'm like, yes, of course I know what time it is. I'm on God's time. That's what time it is. I never know. You know, like I said, I may get two or three hours of sleep, and then I, I got to get up and, and preach, you know, give me, give me a little bit of Bible study podcast. Uh, amen. It's all good, friends. It's all good. Amen. A couple of notes here. Oh, Monday, second uh, Bible study here. Again, I should be back on Restream again. I'm going to just do a Monday double shot uh, for you, friends. And uh, we'll get back uh, on track tomorrow. And uh, let's see. Oh, what date <laughs> is the 12th already? Uh, amen. Yeah, I think about 10.30. We might jump out uh, a little bit ahead time. Uh, friends, and uh, jump that over to 10.30 instead of 10 tonight. Uh, again, I never know, and I kind of got to play, th- you know, uh, kind of play things by ear here. Never never really know uh, how it goes, uh, friends. So, And we will actually be on uh, Twitch TV tonight as well. Uh, amen. So I'm going to be on there and LinkedIn, of course. Oh, we got Daily Motion going on, too. Great channel. Go check it out, friends, if you get a chance. Uh, it's always cool. Always a good channel to uh, check out. Very interesting. And Vimeo as well. I'm on back on Vimeo. I've got a new account over there. Uh, TikTok, Instagram, all the social media channels. Uh, Spotify, everywhere that you get your podcasts at. Check it out. I'm on there. Verbal Wisdom. Uh, still on there debating whether I should even be on there. I don't know. I'm not liking the channel too much. Uh, having some issues with um, kind of politics on that channel. Um, I'm not sure who's running it or what's going on, but uh, they um, they they blocked or kind of uh, shut down one of my podcasts. One of the messages talked about 9/11 and, and remembering and everything. Uh, They took it down. So uh, I'm not going to be associated with the channel that's doing that. Uh, I don't play that uh, political, worldly stuff. Uh, Unfortunately, that's how uh, the channels are run, and I just don't want to be a part of it. Uh, So uh, I'm I'm reconsidering being on that channel. Uh, So we'll see. (laughs) We'll see how that goes. Uh, But uh, pretty pretty upset with it so uh typical you know just typical here so uh, let's see trying to finish out this part here first thessalonians chapters one uh and two that'll be our opening scripture for later tonight um All right, uh, that should work there. And again, we'll close that out. And I'll move on to the next page. Uh, and then, like I said, the next, uh, we should be back on track with uh, with uh, Mel and TV. So I'll do that tomorrow. We'll be back on tonight. Uh, again, giving you a double shot Monday, uh, friends, in the word here. And uh, go back over quite a bit, so... Amen. And I'm set. 10.30? About 10.30 sounds good to you, friends. Uh, I think that's uh, about what uh, we're going to do. And uh, let's see. I think that's the chords. Uh, All right. So I'll be working on this. Got a new Bible coming in, like I said, a million times here. I know I'm letting you know. Uh, Boy, that's going to be awesome. I'm just excited about that after 10 years or so. Uh, All right, let's close out the channels. Blog Talk Radio, I will see you guys on the next uh, podcast there. Always appreciate the support. Thank you guys again. Keep subscribing. Get them numbers. Friends, we're going going well. We're going to be up there. So appreciate you guys. I'll see you back here tonight, 1030 Pacific Standard Time. On your dial in the house, friends, Pastor Rick. Worldwide Live Ministry Podcast Network. 
Uh, amen. Back on Restream TV later on tonight, like I said, about 10.30 or so Pacific Standard Time. I'll see you there, friends. Take care. Block Talk Radio. I'll talk to you guys on the next broadcast. Friends, take care. Amen. All right. Um, let's see. Yep. Closing out. And don't forget Tumblr, friends. I, I'm still over there, too. Been on that page for a long time. Uh, amen and amen. All right. Uh, let's see. I'm going to go to studio. And I want to go to... Uh, that's it there. All right. Blog talk, or Spreaker. Not, not Blog Talk, but uh, Spreaker. Uh, podcast. I'll see you guys next. Amen. Take care. All right. Hold on, you guys. Amen. Um, let's see. Um, interesting. <laughs> All right. Let's close it out, my friends. I'll see you guys on the next broadcast. Take care. Restream TV. Pastor Rick. Worldwide Live Ministry Podcast Network. Good morning, 5 a.m. on your dial, friends, Pacific Standard Time. Talk to you soon. Have a great day, friends. I'll see you tonight. All right, it's preparing down here. All right, uh, Spreaker Channel 3. I'll see you on the next one. Take care.